Welcome to Now About the James Bill. Hope you're very well. Thanks for joining me. Well, it rained kind of constantly last night, uh, probably about 10, 12 hours of rain so far. Um, and the cover on the back seems to have done all right. There was a lot of wind last night as well. So I secured it down as much as I could. I couldn't find my thing of cable ties because literally the boat is an absolute pit at the moment. But um, as soon as I get that on, uh, some cable ties on today just to secure that in place a bit more. But last night, yeah, it's still there, the cover this morning. It's clean. It's kept the uh, the deck pretty clear um, of water. So yeah, I mean, for a temporary solution, it's worked quite well. I'm gonna have to put in the steps today and kind of secure them in place because um, that's still a little bit of a trip hazard. Um, so that's that. But really the plan for today is to get the upper walls in. Um, it's a rainy day. So I've got kind of all day on the boat in order to do that. I'm not going to be distracted by walking over to the jetty and mucking around in a dinghy, hopefully. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be good. I do have to go to the chandlery though, um, because uh, that will explain why the gas was not installed yesterday. Um, so my gas man came round, and after having another look at the tank location, he wasn't particularly happy with the gap between. He wasn't happy with the gap between the stern bulkhead and the tank. There's a skin fitting which basically goes through all of that, and there was just too much of a um, there was too much of a of a gap, um, and it didn't it just didn't work particularly well. So I need to go to the chandlery today to get another skin fitting. So we're going to come out the bulkhead wall, and then so the skin fitting there. Then the pipe will come out of there. It'll go underneath the gas locker and into the side of the gas locker into another skin fitting. So um, there just wasn't the room. The gas locker would have to be further out or really flush against the wall, which I can't do because I can't take the lid off it. So there's plenty of room around the tank in order for us to get this done. So that's what we're going to do. Um, it will be fine. Um, and hopefully Dale is going to come back on Thursday afternoon to in to, to, to finish the uh the gas install which means hopefully by saturday uh my birthday i can still have my ambition of having a spag bowl cooked on the hob and maybe to help wash it down i have a feeling i know what this is because i was promised some beer and biscuits and by jove i've definitely received the biscuits Classics, Bombardier, Hobgoblin, Courage, Old School, Pedigree Amber, blimey. Oh, that's excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. from Mr. C.D. Stead. Hope this helps with the cabinet making. Enjoy the vlogs, warts and all, from Craig and Heather. Well, oh, thank you guys. Warts and all, that's what it's meant to be. Hope this helps with the cabinet making. I'm wondering if this is a pocket jig. Ooh, nice drill bits. Oh, it is. It's a pocket jig. That is absolutely amazing. Craig and Heather, you are absolutely brilliant. So I'll explain how this works once I've worked out how, to, how it works. But essentially, those, 
those jigs in there mean that you can basically I'll explain it to you but you can drill into two parts if I wanted to put two holes in that side there I use that it lines up and it means I can get a nice a nice um, fix into kind of angles and cabinet making like that so that is fantastic thank you so much you guys I'm definitely going to be using that uh, today because one of the things I'm going to have to be doing is putting battens in between these lower battens, not everywhere on the boat, but certainly in some of the bits where there's going to be a bit of flex under the wall there, I need to do that. And the only way of securing those battens in uh, without taking the whole boat apart is by basically screwing in on the angle up like that, um, which is which is fine. Um, but it is easy to miss uh, and it's easy to, to not get the chunkiest bit of the, of the timber. So this pocket jig will make sure that that is all accurately lined up. Mate, you're a star, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, the upper walls are gonna go in today. Um, I've already done a couple, uh, well, I, not really, I did that bit there. Um, I did it last night um, because, well, there's nothing else to do on a boat at night um, in the hammering rain. Um, so I just worked until it's probably about one-ish, one thirty, something like that. Um, so I'll show you how I did that. This was the most important bit to get done um, because it was. This is the largest piece of solid timber. Um, potentially there is a bigger one down in the galley, but I don't know if I'm going to do that in one or two sheets yet. Um, but well, you'll see for yourselves. It wasn't particularly straightforward. I'm hoping it's going to be easier from now on. Um, but much like putting the first bathroom ceiling panel in, this pose a little bit of a, uh, a problem. Um, just it's just you know one person putting up a large sheet on a sloping vertical wall is just by definition not easy. But with the help of those supports, it's worked. So that's the plan today: get all this nine mil ply out the way and get it put on the walls. Right, so this is going to be the first panel. I've cut, I've cut the board. They were, I've had all the boards cut to the same. They've all been ripped, basically at the same height. So all I need to do is cut the uh, cut to length for the main for the main bits anyway. And I'm hoping this will kind of push the ceiling panels up a bit when that goes in. Some trim along there when it's all finished. There's a nice edge to there which can be finished off. And then what I'm hoping is that one that's on, I have to see how much flex there is in that wall to see if I need like a support beam at the bottom. But I'm going to get my supports and see if I can get that in place. this but I'm just going to give it a go because the only advantage the only saving grace is that this is one of the larger ones so one of the tricky ones to get out the way early on I guess If that 
the support is falling down. I think I need a tapometer to see if I can nudge this in place. So I get better fit.
don't think that's as good as that's going to be. Okay. Let's get that screwed in. All these holes are going to be covered up with filler and then painted over so it doesn't matter that they're all going to be in slightly different places. The important thing is that they're all secured. First piece is up. You've still got to trim the bottoms there, just to take the end, ends off them. That's fine, I'm, I'm not gonna need a bottom support. That's got no flex to it, that's fine. That's good, nice line down there, nice line across the ceiling. It brings those panels in fine. Once I've got the trim up there, that's gonna be, that's gonna work that out a treat. I'll finish that line up there. Right. Good. And there's enough overhang there for me to put in some USB sockets and stuff like that. Because there's quite a bit of depth on those USB sockets. Well, the first piece went in pretty well. Now I want to put in that piece over there, and that piece there, and the next one down there, which has got a light socket in. Okay, so I've cut this piece out. This is a small one, so I don't have to use the, uh, the supports. Sand that down properly. I just want to take the edge off it now. Right now, I've got to do this bottom bit here. thinking now this piece here may well need a support running from behind it to there because it's only going to be I've only got this batten here really to fix it onto which is only going to be taken up about half of the of the board unlike this one where there's nothing supporting the back of that but because it's got the rigidity of the whole board it's keeping it intact whereas that one I fear is going to be too flexible there so I think I might have to put in a batten behind it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it and see see what it fits like. Yeah, 
there. See, that's got a bit of give in it. Way too much give. And even I'm probably going to have some kind of trim going along there, which will give it some support. But I think I'm probably going to have to put a batten behind that. Well, this is at the dinette, so I don't know, maybe not. Because the cushion of the dinette's going to come up to about there. Well, I think I'll call it a night now, but that's uh, made a bit of difference now. Having the ugliness of the insulation taken away and the kind of the unevenness of it, certainly in the night light. So, yeah, this is good. Right, I'm now going to do this piece here, which is going to be going up to and including the hatch. So I'm going to see if I can do it in one piece to include the hatch and cut the hatch out. That's what I'm going to do on this one. So it needs to be a length of 1340. This is just a little hole for the light switch. Cool. Right, well that second piece has gone in quite nicely. It's really helping obviously frame the inside of the boat, it's making it look really nice. I said I'm going to fill in all these gaps here, there's going to be trim up there, um, all the, kind of the, the seams are going to be hidden. Um, I've just got to work out something here, that this is, this is square but the frame of the boat isn't, so as a result of which there's a little void at the bottom there which I'm going to have to come up with with a plan for that. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going all right. Blimey, the canal is flowing like a river today. Um, so I'm gonna crack on and carry on with the rest of this. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with how the, uh, the upper walls are going in. I'll probably send out another video later on and show you how it's progressing. But until then, hope you guys are well. Take care, bye bye.